Hello, this is Clarence Stogner from AT Controls. We're here today to uh, give you a brief demonstration on how to mount a uh, actuator, rotary rack and pinion type to a ball valve. First thing we want to do is make sure that we have the right valve and the right actuator for the particular application. We want to make sure that the, uh, the pressure class is correct, it's a spring return or a double acting actuator, whatever we're supposed to have. So we want to make sure in the beginning we have the right equipment. Next thing we want to do is make review the IOMs for the valve and the actuator to determine if there's any special requirements that we need to be aware of before we start the assembly process. Next thing we want to do is check the fit of all the parts because one thing we never want to do is take a hammer and beat a coupler onto a valve stem because that's a sure way to damage the packing and obviously on the actuator we want to do the same thing. Make sure the coupler slides freely in with a very minimal amount of play. After that then we want to take the bracket, make sure it fits on the valve and it doesn't hit the flanges. On smaller valves where the mounting pads are below the mounting surface, we want to make sure that the flange bolts don't get in the way of the mounting bracket so it can't be installed later in the field. The other thing, and especially in this application, we have metric bolts in the valve and UNC bolts in the actuator. So we want to make sure that we have the correct mounting hardware that fits all the bolts and screws run nicely into the holes because some of your metric bolts and UNC bolts are difficult to tell the difference. On actuators with blind tapped holes we prefer to use threaded studs so we can run the, the bolt all the way into the bottom of the hole and utilize the entire length of the tapped hole. If we were using a bolt Occasionally they can be too short or too long and either strip the threads out or possibly damage the actuator. Okay, now we're ready to begin the assembly process. So we'll take our bracket, again make sure it fits over our ISO centering ring or clears the packing gland or anything else. Take our bolts, run them into the holes. And at this point, we want to just run them in finger tight. And then before we mount the actuator on there, one last thing we need to check is to make sure that the valve and the actuator are in the same position, i.e. make sure the valve is open and the actuator is open or in this case, the valve is closed and the actuator is closed. Here we can test that by simply looking into the valve and we can see that it's closed and the flats are parallel. In this case, we can just look at the indicator on the top of the valve. It's running perpendicular to the body so we know it's closed. Then we take our uh, coupler, mount it over our valve stem. At this point, we want to slide it over the edge and make sure the top of it is slightly below the top of the bracket, approximately 90 thousandths, so that there's some vertical play once we mount the actuator on there so that the valve stem and the actuator coupler don't get bound up. Then we just simply insert the remaining studs in the bottom of the actuator. and just give them just a little twist to make sure they're snug in the bottom of the hole. Then we take our actuator and set it down on the top of our bracket. Slips down over the top of the coupler. Once again we can reach up inside there and make sure it slides up and down slightly and has a little bit of play. Then we take our nuts and lock washers, assemble them onto the bottom of the studs. Okay, now at this point, just kind of square everything up, make sure they're looking good, and then we can 
tighten down the bottom bolts good and snug. You want to do this in a diagonal or a star pattern to tighten everything down equally. for the actuator nuts. Okay, at this point we have all the mounting hardware snug down ready to go. At this point we're going to make sure that as we look in the valve, in this case it's closed, now we'll put a little air on it and test it for operation. Since this is a double acting, we have to move over to the other port to close it again. Okay. Now I'm going to we'll move it back to the open position again and make sure that the valve is in the full open position. And it looks pretty good. If we needed to adjust the, the waterway adjustment, we can use that by adjusting our stop bolts here to adjust the open and the closed positions of the valve. Okay. Now the, uh, the unit is ready to be taken out and put in the pipeline and ready for service. Hi, I'm Brian Wright. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. We always have engineers and our highly qualified technicians at the ready for any of your questions. For further information, go to atcontrols.com or call us at 513-247-5465. As always, we thank you for your business.